Hey, I'm Mike Spinner, and this is The Scale Culture. I don't know. Does it sound good? All right, so we're getting back on putting together the 407 with the new gears and all that kind of good stuff. And so, like, the first thing is it's a tight, weird, got to get everything lined up the first time to get it together type of a situation. So when you have it apart, you can put this gear back on when you've got this whole section off. And while you got it off, you know, like I went through and I put a little oil, a little tri-flow on all the bearings, put a little lithium grease inside the one-way bearing, which is right there inside that spot right there. And then you got to wiggle it and finagle it and get it back into its position. There is that little freaking thing right there, that little silver thing. That little, that little fucking thing, I gotta get lined up with the bolt hole in there and get that put back together before I put all this stuff, which is where the gear was. And I noticed that there's, you know, there's a little, a little brass thing that goes on here that, you know, if you're not paying attention, you'll miss it. So... I naturally, I stacked it right back on top of where it's supposed to go so that I remember to put it back on there. And that's going to go right on that shaft. So, yeah, we got to get all this stuff. And it, you can't forget, there's a C-clip on here. So, we're going to, I'm going to try to get that put together. And it, you got to clean all this shit while you've got it out. So, I've been cleaning stuff as I've been going so that I can put it right together. One of the things I came up upon is I had to put all four of these bolts in and then I had to make sure because this hole wasn't lining up. It was like, what What the hell? Why wasn't, I mean, it looked like it lined up, but the bolt wouldn't go through. Now the bolt goes through because that shaft wasn't completely seated. And I mean, it was just barely not seated. So you take your little trusty dusty hammer and you smack that just, a little bit just a nudge just a love tap and then that bolt goes through now that's like the last little bit of this so that we can get the rest of it put it back together and next we're gonna throw the motor in here and get it hooked on there with the use of you know this little chingy changus right there and and we'll have the motor in and a little tip <laughs> so you got your bolt motors, right? You got your motor, your, your bolts for your motor. Don't tighten them up all the way. I'm like, why can't I adjust this? Because I tighten that all the way up. Then you have the set screws that go on the motor for the pinion that you're going to have to adjust up and down uh, to make sure that the belt doesn't rub on any of said surfaces like that one right there. And you want it kind of lined up on there. See, I'm a little low, so I'm going to adjust that up. Once it's kind of snug and tight, snug, and then uh, we'll, I'll spin it around and make sure that it's not rubbing on anything. And then it's, it's at the right tension because right now it's super loose because I haven't tightened up these two bolts, which slide the motor back and forth. <laughs> so it's a, it's an adjustment game. As you're tightening things up, making sure that it's not too tight, making sure that it's lined up. And then once you get all that, then you can tighten shit down. Then you got to check it again. All right. I kind of snugged it down. So I've got the, the, the motor bolts tight. I started adjusting the, for the tension, which is still a little loose, a little, a little looser than what it was. But now whenever I spin the motor, just arbitrarily... See, now I am rubbing on here. So I know I need to take the pinion and drop it down on the shaft. All right, so did that, dropped it on the shaft a little bit, spun it around. It's, it's not rubbing anymore because I was hearing it rub, but I'm still not centered on that main gear. And you want to spin this in the direction that's going to make it fly. If you spin it backwards, it's not going to be the same. So I will 
drop the pinion gear down just a little bit. A little bit more. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. All right, there we go. We are close. Close as close as close as I'm going to make it. So now I will go in and I will tighten up both of the set screws on there and adjust the tension just a hair because it's a little a little loose it'd probably be okay but i'm gonna tighten it up just a smidge all right got this kind of adjusted i'm gonna go on the looser side of tension on here that might be a little looser than what i like but i'm gonna tighten it up but here's the rub <laughs> that little spot right there that little freaking chingus, I think, is upside down. Because now, I have play in my head. You can't see it, but when I shake the head, there's all kinds of play in here now. So I'm thinking that that little piece right there is upside down. Notice the bevel? So, yeah, the main shaft's got to come back out again. <laughs> Damn it. All right, so you remember you get a package of very small, big big shims that's where that goes so i flipped that over and one of the shims had fallen out so i had to put it back on there but i got it back in there and now that bolt is really snug in order to put into the hole on the shaft so i will get that bolted back up i get the c-clip put back on get the main gear bolt back on because you got to take that off in order to slide all this stuff up in order to get the shaft when you put the shit in upside down so if you're wondering where to put those shims if you have head play in your shaft you know if you lift it up and you get a little bit of play there find out what shim you're going to need to put in there and it's going to be trial and error so it's going to suck but you can get that to where that is snug but not loose so your your head so your main shaft doesn't go back and forth on there and when i had that upside down boy it was like chunk, 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 chunk. so now i've got it back in there correctly <laughs> now i can put all the stuff back in and you got to take the motor out in order to get to the bolt because there's no way of getting to that bolt through your uh your belt and all that stuff you got to be able to move it out of the way so much fun <laughs> and this is the fun part is getting the nut on the back side of that one right there and i can't see it so i gotta have a flashlight <laughs> shining in here and this is the new uh 5000 lumen flashlight at costco and it's kind of disappointing it's a little brighter than my 2500 but not a lot but uh now i gotta get in here and see if I can't get, let's see if I can see it. Yeah, so that thread I gotta get on there. And there we go. We've got no play in the head to the bearings and all of this stuff. And that spins pretty freely. Now all the resistance comes from all the gears and all the other shit. But that's where you want to put you know, your shims, if you've got any head play in this, that's where you're going to put it. You're going to put it under there with the bevel facing up against that bearing that's underneath. It's like right here. It's in the center underneath the main gear and in that spot right there. Yeah, that's where it's at. In case you ever want to know what all them washers is for, that's what it's for. And it's a pain in the ass. And then when you're flipping it over and your lithium grease is wide open, now I have to clean out my freaking plug because it it's stuffed straight down into the can of lithium grease of course it did so now i gotta clean all that shit out one more thing so i thought it'd be cool to use this nasa gps puck so that i could test out and see if i could get the long line into the firefighting tank with the bambi bucket you know with the gps i thought it'd be cool well, there is no way for me to get this right here other than gluing it to the outside of this, which is not going to happen. I am not going to do that. It looks like shit. 
because the way I've got to get the mechanics in, there's no room. I could get it about right here, but then I have to slide it back. And then when I raise it up, it hits all this junk right here and gets in the way. So there is no room to put the puck, which sucks because I really wanted to try it. I guess I could do something, you know, like that, but it, that looks like shit out there, which I'm not going to do. This is a scale helicopter, not a fucked up with a puck damn thing out there. Anyway, so then <laughs> as I am, sorry, I'm like, okay, done with the GPS puck, move on to putting the tail on and I come to the tail and I, you know, I'm just checking it over, all kinds of good stuff. And the damn thing is moving on the shaft and the gear's not moving. So I'm, what the hell? So I get in here and sure enough, that set screw right there was loose. Not loose enough to uh, keep it from spinning because it's on the flat spot, but loose enough that I could tighten it about half a turn, three quarters of a turn. So yeah, this is when we check our shit. All right, got that bolt in. That bolt way up in there first because I got to slide it all the way back to, in order to get to that bolt. But I put this one in first. Then I put this one in, and it has a spacer. There it is. That little silver spacer right there. So it's tied up against here, centered, and all that kind of good stuff. Then I got to get the, the control arm on there. Then I can put these four bolts in, but I'm not going to do that just yet because now I've got to come up here and put the four bolts that mount the mechanics. One, two, three, four. So now that I have all four of them in, I will kind of line shit up and then tighten them all down. Well, at least the bolt stripped and not the, uh, the blind nut. Let's hope. Whew! It was the bolt. Yeah. Thank God. And now I've got to figure out <laughs> what channels my extra shit went in. <sighs> because I didn't freaking mark it down on there. Eight. Nine is the bucket. All right. There's the bucket. Plug back in. And then all we got to do is plug in the lights. So let me see if I can get this in here while holding a camera and being awesome. <laughs> Lights and channel eight. There we go. Okay. I just got to screw this back in. Did I lose the screw? Yep, I sure did. I might have. I might have taken it out completely. Made this so that most everything comes out with the mechanics, except for that plug. And then I added the bucket plug for doing Bambi buckets. <laughs> Oh, yep. There's that teeny tiny one sitting right down there out the side. That's the one I need for my antenna holder, which happens to be a zip tie. <laughs> but it works! All we gotta do is just screw this into the same hole. Try not to make a new one. This is the three millimeter by five millimeter. No, one millimeter by five millimeter to hold that right where it needs to be. And if you notice those numbers on there, guess what those are? And I couldn't leave it alone. <laughs> so I made a little thing up here. I'm going to paint it black because I want to run and put the NASA thing right here. So it's all black. It won't be as noticeable. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape the wire with some black tape. And it's going to go in one of the ports that I have here. I haven't decided which. So that we can get it to the NASA without cutting holes in it. All right. So there it is. Painted. Primered and painted. And then I will glue it onto the tail boom with something like canopy glue. Something I can take off if this adventure doesn't work and not fuck up the paint. And there it is. So I painted it. And the red paint didn't do very well on the styrene. So you can see I kind of I kind of rubbed it off so it would stick. But I've got it glued down. I've got the nozzle on here. It's at about a 15 degree 
declination, magnetic declination, whatever. And I just put down some tape and I drilled out. This has got, uh, they've got <laughs> holes on the side for viewing something that in Roban's infinite wisdom said, hey, let's put one on each side. Well, I've only seen them on one side, so I just cut it big enough to hold the connector, and it's in there. And, uh, yeah, so the next test will be to kind of put this down better. I have just tape holding it on here right now just to hold it and get in there because the canopy glue is drying, and uh, everything's back together. Seems to be working. So next test will be just... Testing it out and making sure everything works. Checking the sound. And uh, we'll go from there. It might be before HSM. It might not. But we'll see. Back. It's the scale culture. Get out there and build something.